Hello and welcome to Doubles and Trebles. The biggest event, sporting event of the weekend last weekend, Pie Man, was not the Super Bowl that was watched by over 100 million people in America. It was the return of the Players' Championship. 30 events, 128 players down to one in one day. Usually in Barnsley, sometimes in Wigan, sometimes in Milton Keynes. You don't need Arizona and the Kansas City Chiefs or whatever they're called. You need Ryan Searle and Danny Noppert winning Players' Championship events. Um, but no, in all seriousness, what me and you most look forward to from a betting point of view uh, for, uh, from, for the dots. And uh, yeah, it was back Saturday and Sunday. As you can see on screen there, there's the final semis and quarterfinals of, uh, of how it went down. Plenty to talk about. But the best thing is, Players' Championships 3 and 4 return this weekend in Barnsley as well. So back-to-back -back weekends of Players' Championship. A bit of a reflection and a bit of what we might be looking forward to this weekend and some potential bets as well, Pyman. So what did you make of week one? Yeah, I loved it. As you say, um, I have a, a passionate love for these events. Um, just, I just think the whole nature around them, the fact that A, they're uh, only sort of taken interest in by a very niche set of people. Uh, B, the format is just glorious, 100, 128 down to one, um, which makes for a fascinating betting market every time. I mean, some quite a few firms offering four places, which just makes it so appealing uh, as a betting prospect. Um some of the odds on offer are, are, are fantastic. We we regularly, um, you know, we have our fair share of losses, but I think it's fair to say we have our fair share of winners, certainly. Um, so, yeah, lots to love. And this weekend was a great start to the year. Um, two quite fitting winners, really, I suppose, in Ryan Searle and Danny Nopp. It kind of sums up the Players' Championship. Both of these guys off the radar of the general darts fan at the moment because of the uh, Premier League. And we're getting the same eight players rammed down our throat for 16 weeks. Meanwhile... Two very classy floor operators turn up and win titles. And it's also great to see some of the lesser names um, up on this screen as well. I mean, look, let's start with the beaten finalists, Jamie Hughes and Simon Whitlock. I mean, I can't remember the last time them two were in finals. Um, you know, certainly not last year. Uh, so th these events give great chances to these players to sort of snap barren spells. And it, it can so often be the arena where careers are rejuvenated from nowhere, oh, yeah. you know, and, and, and people will, will, you know, perhaps see somebody in a TV game and, and think that they've burst back to form and really they've kind of been slowly rediscovering their form on the floor. And as we look a little bit further down the screen here to the quarterfinals and, and even in the top 16, top 32, you can just get little signals and signs of where players may be in terms of their form and in terms of their mindset. And uh, yeah, I mean, what it doesn't show you here on this screen, because we can't show every single match, obviously, is that a lot of the big names did turn up for these ones. You know, later in the year, we may see the biggest of big names skip these events. But apart from Gerwin Price, they were all pretty much in attendance. MVG was there both days, didn't manage to get beyond the uh, last 32. First round exit on day one for him, of course. Peter Wright showed a couple of flashes, but also didn't really get in the mix. Um, and then we had all the other kind of Premier League players, as I say, aside from Price. Luke Humphrey's having himself a good run on the second day. Of course, very unlucky to miss out on the Premier League. He'll be keen to make a statement in these early players' championships. But we should probably focus on the winner, um, the winners, sorry. So, I mean, Ryan Searle, someone you've talked about many, many times on the floor. Hi, man. I text you at about four o'clock Saturday and I said, I'll be disappointed if Searle wins because... Um, I've backed him on and off. I can't come and claim I back him all the time because I don't, but on and off. And I've had my eye on him. And, you know, you can only back so many. We often put a shortlist together, Pine Man. And next thing you know, we've got 10 names between us. And, you know, you can't back them all. Um, we normally yeah. back five or six, maybe. Um, yeah. But, yeah, um, deserved winner. He, he played he played fantastic throughout the day. Not that um, similar can be said about him. But like you said, Pine Man. You can see there the the final eight on both days. Um, no player made the final eight on on both days. If you see what I mean, so yeah, a real yeah. a real mixture. Um, you know, back in 2017, 18, I think there was there was less than 30 events. I think there was 24 events back then. And Van Gerwen used to win half of them. That just does not happen anymore. It didn't happen last year. It didn't happen the year before. I do think it really is a real real fun just betting the heat. I, I can't say enough po more positive about it, really. I would rather bet on this than the World Championship every day of every week. No problem agree. at all. A um, couple of youngsters that I would just highlight, Pine Man. Um, Dylan Slevin, as you can see there. You know yes. probably more about him than me. Only I think he's only 20 from uh, from the Republic of Ireland. Made a court, made a semi-final, as you can see there, on, on debut. Um, rode a bit of luck. 
He was he did. five one down to Daryl Gurney. Gurney, and he won six five. As you can see, um, Gurney, um, you know, uh, uh, averaging around the ninety mark. Um, that was all. It was always going to catch up with with Dylan there. Um, but I'll get one name up because I'm now excellent at using uh, Dark Connects. This young man here. <laughs> yeah. This young man. Yes. On debut, like Slevin, um, I think he's only 19 from the conveyor belt of talent in Holland. Uh, Jürgen van der Velde beat Ricky Evans, Barney, Beaton, Beaton who knocked out um, Peter Wright in round one, um, mm. one of the first results, and then lost a last leg decider to uh, Countryman Dirk. Um, so I said to you, oh, look at this young lad. He was on the stream for one of the games. I think it was the Barney game he was on the stream. I said, I'm going to back him tomorrow. It was 400 to one, Jürgen, on, on day two. Um, so I thought, yeah, we'll back him. He's, he, he might go under the radar. Look what happened to him on, on obviously, look what happened to him on day two, uh, given that my money was on. As you can see on the right-hand side of the screen, he goes out in the first round. But that's what happens in Players' Championship. Um, before we look to, forward to this weekend, Pye Man, I knew you might have a couple of quid on. Um, anyone else to call out from last weekend? We've called out the winners and maybe a couple of youngsters. Well, he's no youngster, but I thought Richard Veenstra on day two was very, very impressive. I um, don't know if you can get his, his path up on, on PC2 there. Um, but yeah, I mean, anyone that's watched the BDO will be very familiar with uh, Richard Veenstra as a face we've seen a lot of. But it wasn't just the uh, the quality of the results. You know, normally on a player's championship, when you're having a run to the last eight, last four, you've got at least a couple of games where the average has slipped into the sort of 80s, you know, and it and it becomes a scrap. I'm just so impressed with his consistency all day. And we saw this consistency from him at Euro Q School as well. That was how he got his card. He just kept churning out 95, 96 averages. Um, and look at the calibre of player he's beat as well. Rob Cross and Stephen Bunting, who had a fantastic couple yeah, of did. days as well. Yeah. So, um, you know, really impressive from Richard there. He's very unlucky against Simon Whitlock. I mean, that was a game where both players played really well. Um, and it, it was just, you know, it was a coin toss in the end and Whitlock got over the line. But I, I would have really fancied Veenstra um, to make a go of it in the semis, the way he was playing. I mean, this is a man that, unless the bookmakers have had a real change of heart on him, you're getting at least sort of 200, 250 to one on him. And this is no youngster who's sort of had a flash in the pan, potentially. Um, yes, he's a little bit exposed. But what I think we can say about Richard Veenstra is he's playing the dart of his life here. Um, he, he looks to be a different player to the one who was sort of fifth or sixth favourite for the BDO World Championship four or five years ago. You know, he's he's kicked on a level now and he's only going to get better consistently playing in good company and he's shown himself to be a very reliable operator. So he's someone I'll definitely be keep, keeping a keen eye on in uh, the weeks and months ahead. And of course, one thing we should also mention is after these Players' Championship events on Monday, we've had our first couple of Euro Tour qualifiers, which is where... Basically, the top 16 or so automatically qualify for these Euro Tour um, events. And then the, the remaining two card holders are invited to a qualifier of which they'll play down till there's 24 or so, 16 or so left, depending on the field size per event. So um, we've had the qualifiers for the first two Euro Tours of the season. Um, that's another thing to be sure to have a little look at on Dark Connect when you're assessing the form of players. Because sometimes a player will just have a couple of, uh, you know, a couple of decent results at a year or two qualifier, and that'll spark them into the action ahead of PC three and four. So yeah, um, fascinating couple of events, as you say, sixteen different quarter finalists across the two days. So yeah, ro roll on three and four for me. Yeah, we'll be having plenty of bets. Might put a couple up on Twitter. Um, already flagged a couple that you may have never heard of: Jurgen van der Velde and Richard Veenstra. Um, sorry. Stephen Bunting got a mention there by you, Pie Man, as well. Um, I thought he played really well on day one. God knows how he lost to Dave Chisnell in the last 16 on day one. Um, he shouldn't have done. He was miles in front in that game um, there. And as you can see, lost a last leg decider. Mm. And you mentioned the Euro Tours as well. Stephen Bunting went and played four games on Monday, won all four of them. I think he'll yeah. be around the 100 to one shot um, for Players' Championship three and four this weekend. I'll be having a couple of quid on him. And then um, Ross Smith, I noticed last week, was around the 66, 80 to one mark. Too big. Didn't go deep uh, last weekend, really, to be fair. Let's be honest about it. But um, but yeah, enough to enough to um, fill you, you know, fill you with a little bit of confidence that he's still a man in form. One of the most improved players of last year. He fell short to Van Gerwen on Sunday, I think, which is unlucky, you know, with the draw. Um, but at 80, around 80 to one, Ross Smith is of interest. Yeah, it's all, all about price, isn't it? I mean, look, 
We see the two winners there, Danny up at Ryan Searle. They are what we would call mid-tier players, you know, players who win one or two yeah. players' championship events a year and are always capable of mixing it, you know. Um, and they're generally priced around 33, 40, um, maybe even 25 if they're in a little bit of good form. Now, Ross Smith has proven himself. He's a European champion. He was involved in an absolute ding-dong at the World Championships with Dirk van Dijven. But, uh, he won Players' Championship event last year. So Ross Smith is no mug. He should be in that mid-tier. And with a lot of bookmakers, he was priced around the 40-1 to mark. However, there was one who, via a boost, that's a big clue for you there, was he was available to back at 80-1 to four places. Now, you're talking about 20-1 um, to one at quarter odds there to make the semi-finals. I guarantee you, if you play 20 of these players' championships, Ross Smith is making at least one semi-final. I'm surprised if he's not making two or three and maybe even winning one of these events. So, you know, there's nothing to say they won't correct that price, but they shouldn't have cha- They shouldn't change it based on performance. I certainly hope they won't because uh, a few of my shillings will be going there this coming weekend, definitely. Um, I agree with your comments on Stephen Bunting as well. And we're talking about players who've been on good form, uh, Stephen Bunting having a good World Championship, of course. Another man who had a very good World Championship. So made the last 16 on day two, I think, um, or maybe in the last 32. Uh, Gabriel Clemens, the World Championship semi-finalist. Went out to Michael Smith in the end, 6-3. Not a great performance from Clemens. However, he played quite well to get to that point. He was put in at 100-1. to one. Um, They may not look an impressive list of names that he's beaten there, but I think anyone who follows the Players' Championship will know that uh, Gian Van Veen is a very capable young man. Uh, John O'Shea made it a PC final last year and Christoph Chuck uh, prior to that 6-0 had looked in quite decent nick for the day. So there we are. Losses to Michael Smith and Raymond van Barneveld. Nothing to put me off. And if he's put in again at 100-1, to 1, I think he's an each way proposition. Yep, I agree. So plenty to look forward to this weekend. And the next Players' Championship events after this one are in about a month's time, the 10th and 11th of March. So Get your Players' Championship fix this weekend and hopefully uh, we might back a couple of winners along the way. We'll uh, speak to you soon and uh, yeah, make sure you check out our Premier League uh, Week 3 preview as well. So thanks for watching and we'll speak soon.